Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dan Explains. In a few days, the United States will be conducting the midterm elections. For those who don't live in the U.S., or do, but could care less, that's an election where nearly half the United States government elected officials are up for election. But the president and vice president are not. So this time of year, we see lots of ads pushed out. And probably you guys and gals outside the U.S. see some of them, too, as a little bit of collateral damage. Anyway, we see tons of ads put out by candidates and political funds. One theme I see often, especially coming from a certain side of the aisle, is that we need to vote to strengthen our democracy. Well, what if it wasn't the Founding Fathers' intention for the U.S. to be a democracy in the first place? Let me explain why. Joe Scott, on his Answers with Joe YouTube channel, recently brought up how well the U.S. ranks among democracies. Well, among the <coughs> not <coughs> unbiased organizations that rate how well a good democracy is, they rated the U.S. pretty poorly as democracies go. Many people, especially in the younger generations, do a lot of hand-wringing over this sort of thing. They don't like things like the Electoral College, or even that every U.S. state gets to elect two persons to the Senate, no matter the state's population, if they ever understand that at all. Thank God they don't know that the senators used to be appointed and not elected. More on that in a minute. The Electoral College is a group of people who get together after a presidential election to do the actual voting that selects the next president of the United States. Normally people who do the voting in this college, people called electors, are compelled by law to vote the way they were told to by their state, which for the most part is determined by the outcome of the election in the state that sent them. So, it's basically a ceremonial job. Although, there are a lot of scenarios where some people can switch their vote, but that's a discussion for another video. How many electors each state gets is apportioned based on the data from the last national census. So as long as people haven't moved around too much in a 10 year window, it's pretty accurate. The issue arises because high population states tend to vote with Democrats. Well, low population states tend to vote Republican. So big voter turnout numbers don't tend to help the Democrats as much because you're already going to get the high number of population states with most electors anyway. Whether there was 100 or 100,000 people who vote in each state is going to send the same number of electors that have been allotted to them. This means you can get situations where even though fewer people voted in the smaller redder states, the Republican candidate wins anyway, even though more people technically voted for the other guy, or gal, as in the 2016 election. This has happened quite a few times over the years as well. In recent memory, the 2000 election where Al Gore won the popular vote but lost the Electoral College to Bush, yeah, I know, some people think Bush was appointed by the Supreme Court, but most people don't realize that that didn't end the recounting of the election. Even after all the recounts, Bush still won. The margin was less than 600 votes out of almost 6 million who said that every vote doesn't count. Anyway, the other election is the 2016 election where Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but the Donald trumped her with the electoral vote. And no, I am not sorry. So you can see there has been a growing following to do away with the electoral college and go to a direct election like most democracies have. Or Sorta, of, anyway. With the current system, it seems like the U.S. isn't really a democracy at all, right? Well, the whole thing is, you're saying. The argument that the U.S. should be a better democracy than it is, is a red herring. The U.S. is not a democracy. It's a republic. Everyone assumes the U.S. is the latter, because it's better for the media if people think it is. Because democracies are easier for the media to control. The more direct, the better. Now don't get me wrong, the U.S. uses a democratic election process but its government structure is a republic. It was planned from nearly the beginning. Articles of the Confederation, us people who actually care about history will never forget you. It was to avoid the tyranny of the majority, as John Adams said. Back then, senators were appointed by the state legislatures and couldn't make new laws, and still can't technically, but they found a cheat. They were supposed to act as a check in the house to prevent the federal government from trampling on the rights of low population states. That was until the 17th Amendment in 1913, which kept two senators per state, but elected them by a popular vote, rather than being appointed by the state legislature, something that weakened the power of the states in the federal system. The Electoral College was also created to protect the rights of the smaller states. If it didn't exist, candidates for president would basically ignore all the states except the biggest few states. Basically, the majority of Americans would get it totally ignored. 
the concerns of entire regions would get overlooked. You can see great examples of this by looking at the states of California and New York. These states are mostly made up of people who come from major cities. The concerns of the people in the rural areas of the state, which provide the resources for those cities, are nearly completely ignored by the politicians whose districts may only be a few blocks in area. You'll notice the intent of the Founding Fathers wasn't to give the people a government that the people can control. It was to give the people a government that protects everyone's liberties. Even the liberties of the people who may not think like everyone else. That's what creates a free society, not democracy. Is the United States of Republic perfect? No. Would I want it to be more democratic? Not if the people in the current culture are deciding. The issue with making changes in the current system on a national level is that there are a lot of snakes in it right now, and if Pandora's box was opened, I don't think anyone, except the current puppet masters, would be pleased with the result. As Benjamin Franklin said, when he was asked what form of government they had given us at the end of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, a republic, if you can keep it. Yes, please, let's keep it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon, link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.